Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another deck profile. Today I'm here with Eric who got top 8 at the Texas DFW 1K. Eric, how's it going, man? Pretty good, man. Ready to talk about this deck. Awesome. So you played Reboot Gohan and what's really cool is this list is very heavily influenced by Draftbox 6. So so before this, you know, Reboot Gohan was very much a mono green deck. That was the, that was kind of the list that was doing very, very well. Some blue green here and there. And this is more of like a blue green list, some red splash too. Uh, so first off, what made you want to play Reboot Gohan? Yeah, so, you know, this, this meta is really, really aggro right now. Um, I looked at my other options, you know, Vegex, Red Broly, uh, all these other options. You know, I was looking into Hatchiak actually for, for a bit, but... I ended up deciding to just play Gohan mainly because I, I was testing this list. Uh, my teammate Puyan was actually the one that came up with was this, this idea, and I really couldn't land on anything else. I didn't want to play Vegex. I didn't have the cards to play Red Broly. So, you know, me having a background on, on Gohan and knowing what it does, I just kind of picked it. Cool. So before we get into the actual list itself, I want to ask you this question too. So going back to like last format, right? Or I guess you could say pre draft box six, whether you want to call that a side set or, or new set, whatever. Um, comparing like that version of reboot Gohan to like this current version that you have, would you say this one is like infinitely better? Would you say like this one still needs work? What, what would you say in like that kind of regard? So the, the funny thing is that something that I've seen is that in terms of mirrors, like anything that's like not green gohan kind of lo uh, loses to green gohan but in terms of other matchups i feel like i honestly don't know because i haven't delved too much into like regular green and green blue lists but this list has a lot of resources like it can go really wide it can defend itself really well so i, I personally think that it might be better than other versions but looking at mono green it also has some really really strong options so i don't think i can currently like accurately compare the versions okay that's definitely a fair statement i i don't i totally agree with what you're saying though like just looking at the list which we'll get into in just a second uh it definitely seems like you, you can spam a board much better than like the the pure mono green go on this because <laughs> oh yeah because they generally just played the one drop double strikers and not too many like crazy battle cards but we'll, we'll just get into the list now so uh, here we go. Starting off, we have four Goku Nimbus Master. This card is just insane for fast aggro. It's basically a one drop 15k. That that's just a lot of pressure on its own. The one Champa and and the one Sensu Bean. So um, this is generally what the deck revolves around. The whole skill is package. But I notice actually there there is a lot of one drop 10k combos. Right. That is one thing I do notice in your list, which doesn't yeah. exist in a lot of the mono green lists. So was that ever a problem having so many one drop 10ks? No, I actually added more because that was the problem. I was finding myself using like a lot of free plays because you know these this engine is plays on an extremely low curve as as we'll see as we continue to look at it. But right. uh, I was finding myself in, in testing and was myself just to kind of see sequencing that I was a lot of the time I was open on like two three energy. So at that point is when I actually added some of the, some of the other cards just to have more energy to tap for. Gotcha. So you actually wanted more beefy combo cards. That's that's really interesting because I think a lot of people would say the reverse. But I mean, I guess I guess with four sensor bean and and your leader untap on awaken and whatnot, I guess that makes some sense. So we'll keep going through the list here. So we have for the rest of the blue cards, we have four of the two drop twenty k Nappa, three of the thirty k Bardock, and then one chilled pirate, uh, greatest pirate in the cosmos. I, I love this engine. Uh, I think this chilled is an amazing card. Uh, basically a free play on turn three, and then it gets you more skillless battle cards. I do have a question though because I think that. The Nappa Evolve, uh, I forget his exact name, but the guy that evolves over this vanilla <laughs> Nappa for the one drop 20k double strike, uh, was that ever something you tried out? Uh, <laughs> no, because I never even thought of it. I was just throwing in skillless cards, and both of these, is, if, if, you, if you'll notice, all of these are Draft Fox 6 skillless. Right. <laughs> so when I was looking through bulk, uh, what was it, for one of the other cards, I'm like, oh, I'll just pick out these skillless, but... You know, it's something I could definitely consider. Yeah, for, no, for sure. I mean, the, yeah, the skillless guys don't necessarily matter. If, if you're just pulling them all out of the draft box six stuff, might as well, right? But yeah, I think that what's interesting in a deck like this is that you're so fast that you don't necessarily mind. Like, like let's say you charge this Nappa, right? And then you want to play that Nappa because, because he can evolve over a Nappa in your energy. So let's just say you're going for game. You don't necessarily need that, like, third energy, right? So maybe you could do that. Right. It just seems like a cool play. But um, regardless, still obviously a very, very strong spammy engine. Uh, we'll go into the next part here. So we have two feet, two heart arrow, and three shocking death ball. So 
Uh, I think as far as like standard reboot Gohan goes, this is like maybe a low amount of feet. I think they generally play three. Yeah. Um, what was two just just fine for you? I just don't like this card. Oh but really? Like like I, you don't I like feel... you don't like its application or? No, because I normally uh, historically I've never played green, and and Gohan. You know I played my like five color version or whatever, and I never chose green, so I I never liked this card. But I actually had it sighted, and then I realized that I'm probably dumb if I just don't main it because of how strong it is. So I ended up maining it, and I might. I still have to mess around with ratios after the tournament, so I, it might go up, probably will go up. I just, I just don't like this card very much because gotcha. of my past. That's okay. I mean, it's still, still, you still had it in the deck, right? And it's still a kind of ridiculous card, so uh, yeah, definitely makes really sense is. there. And then Heart Arrow, great for clearing blockers, certain things like that. And then Shocking Death Ball. So a lot of skills go on lists don't even play negates. So did you just was this very useful for you in terms of just like the shocking negate to get more life, get more card draw, basically stop a big attack and then just go in the next turn? Was that like a situation that popped up? It was a lot? incredibly useful because you know, in, in a lot of situations, especially this meta, there's a lot of aggro like you know Vegex, Red Broly. There's some more mid range decks that can still kind of hit you hard on the swing back. Mm -hmm. And if I, I, I kind of. I, I like to think of aggro decks more as of a kind of mid range strategy. You know, most Gohan decks can probably go in on you on turn two. I, I look to go in on turn three with this one. So, you know, I, I need some kind of defense up until then, potentially. Or if I go in, but I don't like all in you, you know, just awaken at three, grip myself the two, and just kind of beat you down, then I'm going to need something to be able to defend myself when you try to swing back at me. So. These, these three negates were incredibly useful, whether I tapped for them or took a life for them. It's amazing. Gotcha, gotcha. Alrighty, so moving along here, this is more of like the two drop spam. So we have three of the budding hero. We have three Dimension Sport Trunks and two Vanilla Gohans, which basically complement the Nappas that you had earlier in the deck. So uh, what's really cool here is all this like new skillless spam that is in draft box six, like the chilled, like the, uh, the great Sandman budding hero. They're, they're tied to certain colors, but they're not leader locked. So you basically took this blue green, you know, deck and, and used both of those spamming engines. Uh, I guess my question is how useful were budding hero and, and the chilled pirate? Oh my God. They're so good. Like I really, really, really love this skillless engine. And it's kind of obvious to me, you know, I read, I read these cards after my teammate like pointed out that we, sh it, it, it's actually funny because he, he wanted to make this as a kind of a bad, like joke deck. And I was like, oh, hold, hold on a second. So I, I read these cards and they're just amazing. I mean, you play like Dimension Support Trunks and then you have a two drop for the Cyaman and you just get to spam the board so super fast. And even against um, something like Vegex, I free played this chilled and just swung at the unison for like a guaranteed three drop skill to come out. Like it's just, I love this engine. It's really good. And like every card in this deck I think is amazing. Yeah, I can definitely see that because every card it just it just does something powerful on its own, which is which is really cool to see. Uh, and then moving along, we have three Dodoria Cold Blooded. We have two Bardock Awakened Instincts. So that's your other Overrealm, and that pairs very nicely with Beerus Godly Majesty. So I guess if you can go through like a turn three, like, there just there just seems to be a million actions you can take, right? Like Dimension Support into Skillless into Budding Hero, and then maybe like free play a Chilled. Or if you want to, you know, forego the, the Dimension Support, you can go Bardock Awakened Instincts. Beerus, Godly Majesty. Uh, were there were there ever other cards in the deck that you that you wanted to fit, but maybe had to cut uh, because maybe you needed room or they just kind of underperformed? Not really. I mean, so so far I've I've been really satisfied with everything. The the only thing I maybe consider kind of taking out at this point might be like the Beerus, to be honest. But I don't know. I, I have to mess around with what overall cards I kind of want to play because it's just. It's just something I need to explore a little bit more right now. Gotcha, gotcha. And then the final parts of the main deck, and then we'll get into the side deck after. So three Belmod. I mean, it's just more free attacks, right? Eventually, you know, you're going for a game. You just you clear your own board. You play Belmod. You swing some more. Uh, the four Paragus makes a lot of sense. Three Infernal Villain Cell. I was going to ask about this, but I mean, it just makes sense because earlier you said you wanted more 10k combos, and this one is right. a 10k combo that draws a card. So with that explanation, it makes perfect sense. And then the uh, the Primal Carnage. What's really cool about Primal Carnage and Reboot Gohan 
is most players just use it for the removal i mean is that is that mostly why you included it or was that, the that's five? exactly why that's exactly why i mean it's just it's it's for the same reason as shocking death all right you know i need something to defend myself with and if my opponent decides to go all in with a battle card or i need to get rid of something like against vegex uh in the tournament i i actually won game one because i killed their power booster with the primal carnage and they couldn't you know go into splintering mine or any of that so it's it's a extremely extremely useful card to just have that's so that's so funny how this scr is seeing a lot of play just because of that removal effect when i think people kind of slept on that removal effect at first Big but, time. Uh, that's really funny uh all right so now we have the side deck here i'm just gonna let you walk us through the side deck you know you, you can give us some brief explanations on some choices here yeah so it's really weird to build a side for an aggro deck in my opinion because i feel like for aggro decks your your main board is kind of your you know bread and butter you just you put everything in you just kind of play it so right. the the side's really hard to decide what to do on because you don't really need that much you know it's it's more of like uh you know texting i have a hard arrow love and a dodoria just in case i need more consistency against certain things um dormant is kind of a must in my opinion i only own two i'd probably go up to to, to three if i could but dormant's really good against the aggro mirrors you know i was citing it literally every game because i saw aggro uh mirrors almost every single round, uh, you know, Majin Vegito, VegX, I had to play uh, a Gohan Mirror, and it was really valuable. Um, the Probably the only cards I would take out at this point, just because I they didn't see any play or I didn't know what to really do with them, is probably the Frieza, because I was never really sighting in the Demigra. Mm -hmm. um, if I sighted Dormant, it was mostly just Dormant, unless uh, Demigra had some kind of use other than just being a unison. And I would probably take out the uh, the Jokel blocker as well because while I, uh, my intention putting it in was to like have it as an option against like Red Broly, I still feel like I don't really need it. You know, I, I thought about um, like I was talking about earlier in the Gohan mirror. I just kind of lose because they're playing Monogreen and I'm not. They it's because they have access to Cell's Kamehameha, and uh, against something like a Green Mirror, I also kind of need that kind of utility to kind of rip cards after they dormant you know keep them at a low hand so something i was thinking is you know taking out some of these cards and putting in like four cells coming in the side deck so after game one i can side out my blue engine for you like take out my beans maybe take out some chilled and then side some of those cards and then finally the uh, the two vegetas is mostly because you know blue is kind of an issue if you, they just sit there and just negate and untap. I think these cards were kind of a mistake personally, but they have their use. So, especially for for a blue matchup, I have to at least have some inside. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I wish they never printed these silver bullet types of cards, but they're there, and I, I think they're actually best slotted in aggro decks because you know blue. If you're playing like a mid range mirror as a blue deck, you you kind of don't mind dimension magic just being a regular negate. But when you're up against something aggressive, you really really want that untap to be able to defend more. So I, I totally get where you're coming from there. But anyways, excellent excellent deck. Uh, very uh, very good job on your finish there. Any final shout outs you want to throw out there? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, shout out to, to my awesome team, PV. You know, we came out, we got three of us in the, in the top cut that day. Um, shout outs to, to obviously my dad. You know, I never play him at home because he plays control and I play aggro and it makes me very, very mad. So, <laughs> and, uh, you know, just to people I test with, you know, I, I mentioned this in my post. Um, I test with, you know, my, my friend Rohit from here from our locals, Jason Scott, who is another great player. I mean, he's, he's top, like every event he's played with VegX and just whenever I test with my team, um, another thing is that I'll probably, you know, have, I'll have a more in depth, um, for, for anyone interested, I'll have a more in depth kind of, kind of thing explaining, you know, uh, my day that day in full and just matchups and cards. So if you're interested in that, that should be coming out this week if I make it. So yeah, that's it. Awesome, man. Very cool. And we'll see you next time.